Shadow Man is a 1999 PC title that had a pretty good Dreamcast port. The game itself had pretty decent reviews for the time, however, the N64 port just wasn't as good. I mean, it had some performance problems, and it didn't look that great, there was maybe a bit of cut content, but then the PlayStation port was just diabolical, and that's what we're going to be covering, obviously. The PlayStation 1 port is bad. Why bad? Well, it's actually advanced for the time. It actually loads stuff from the disc dynamically, like Crash Bandicoot or Soul Reaver. The problem? Uh, you get 20 FPS on a good day. Normally, you may get 10 or 12 or 15. And if you're unlucky, you get 8. 8. Now, what is the problem with this? Why is this happening? You may have also noticed, oh, why is there warping that's worse than usual? Because believe it or not, this warping is a lot worse than it usually is. And we'll get into this right now. So to understand why the polygons are jumping around drunkenly so, so much when this doesn't really happen in other PS1 games, it's because of something called subdivision. And every single PS1 game that is 3D and that tries to be high quality uses subdivision. The way it works is, you see, the PlayStation 1 can handle both quads and triangles. Both of them have their own benefits and drawbacks. For our examples, we'll just be using quads because the math is simpler. Here's how it works. So, the PS1 has texture warping. That is because every single texture is drawn two-dimensionally. However, the parts that aren't 2D, quote-unquote, the parts that are always going to be clamped correctly, are going to be the points of the object, the points of a triangle or the points of a square, the vertices. Because of that, if you have a lot of warping on a polygon that is at a very high angle, you can fix that by just subdividing it. Because you subdivide it, now there's another point which tells you exactly where in memory that point is, and it's like an extra bit of precision which can help fix textures. They still warp, obviously, but it's a lot less noticeable. So the problem is, if you would take a civilized video game, you would have, for instance, one LOD level that is far away, then when you come close, it'll subdivide once, and then when you come even closer, the bottom half will subdivide again. This makes it so it's not jarring. Now, the system which they're using is very, very overzealous. It does have two steps of subdivision, except the second step subdivides the entire quad. And subdivides more than just the closest quad to the screen. It is very aggressive, which obviously does fix your warping, at least to a degree. But as you can probably see, it kills the frame rate. But that's not the big frame rate killer, that's just one of the frame rate killers. The main issue is that they are subdividing things which should not be subdivided. You see this bridge? Y you see how our performance goes to like absolute shit w when you come close to the bridge? Well, if we look at the polygons... Oh! Oh, what about... Oh! Oh, that branch is like a billion... Po oh! Yeah, so that is the problem. Oops. So as it would turn out, the big problem in Shadow Man, well, one of the two, is that every single ground terrain thing is subdivided, regardless of the actual size of the polygon. Now, fun fact, in Blender, if you use something like that, if you're making your own PS1 game, you can actually tell it which ones you want to subdivide and which ones you don't but the developers clearly had no such tools. There are other ways you could do this, such as maybe, I don't know, telling the bridge object just not to subdivide, because obviously there are things that don't subdivide like this, like shrubs, the water doesn't subdivide this badly, and some other things like animals and the player character also doesn't subdivide. But very clearly, they just didn't know how to do it, or they didn't want to do it, or they weren't experienced, I don't know. Now, the problem here, as you can probably tell, is we're going from one quad to 16. 
Now, considering that one of these things has four sides, we're going from four to 64. <laughs> that is not good. Per frame, this game is trying to render, on average, like 2,000 polygons, which is like Crash Bandicoot levels, except this isn't Crash Bandicoot, nor is the engine optimized enough to render so many frames. But that's only part of the problem. You see, if you were hand counting every single polygon here, you would not get a full 2,000 per frame. So where are the other ones? Uh, oh. All right. The game loads this entire thing as one big area and not as multiple small areas where you could conveniently not render the smaller areas when you're not there. No, it renders it. You see, the issue is the PS1 has no Z buffer, no depth buffer, so everything is rendered back to front, the furthest away object to the closest object. The problem with this approach sadly, is that it means you have to quite aggressively cull parts of the terrain that you aren't rendering, because if you don't do that, you are going to be rendering a ton of terrain that the player is not going to see. This not only wastes performance, but it also wastes draw time. And both of these are important. And the game not only spends a bunch of polygons rendering parts of the terrain that just don't matter, but if you look at the skybox... Oh! That's also made of like 50 billion polygons, and we barely get to see it. Wow. So what are the fixes here? Very clearly this is a short video because the issues of this game are like, very surface level. Well, the way you could probably fix if you're an epic lead hacker, uh, the subdivision is you could probably patch it to only do one level of subdivision, and just delete the second level, and the game would be half fixed. I mean, you can already kind of fix the game by rendering it at like 30 FPS with like a 30 FPS cap, and then boosting the CPU of the P of the virtual PS1 in an emulated to 300%. But with actual code fixes, you would have to rewrite the subdivision routine, and you would have to, and this would be the much harder part, uh, actually disassemble each object, make each area actually separate, and have different subdivision parameters per each object. Now, I can't do that, sadly. I don't have the source code. I'm pretty sure the PS1 game's source code is the only one that exists, but sadly, I do not have the industry credentials or know-how or anything, really. Uh, but I do have an emulator, and we can see how this game would look and feel at 30 FPS, and you know what? If this game actually ran well, this would be a really good port of Shadow Man. Though, if you were doing all of that, you should also add, like, some invisible walls, because I found a funny bug where you can jump up onto this platform at the very beginning of the game and jump into the void endlessly, and the terrain keeps looping, so uh, what you can do is you can eventually, with some air control, crash into the landing at such speed. You, I think you die and respawn, I don't know. It's really funny, though. Anyways, that's gonna be about it. Uh, thanks for watching this really short video. Shadow Man is a really short game. I would love to get into fixing some of this old stuff, but I just don't have the technical skills. I'm sorry. I, I program in Java, not very basic stuff like this. It's, uh, oops. Anyways, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.